tracks. Why you always gotta pick riff tracks? It's your lucky day. It's time for riff tracks. Hello, I'm Faith, and welcome to Faith's Take, where I talk about anything and everything that I find interesting. And welcome to my review of Riff Tracks as the guy from Harlem, one of the absolute best that Riff Tracks has to offer. I mean, spoiler alert for my final thoughts on this, I guess, but why wait to tell you? If you haven't seen this one, it's one of my highest recommendations. It's one of the doofiest black exploitation films you'll ever see, and our trio here do a fantastic job tackling it. So let's not waste any time and jump right into my review of the guy from Harlem. Interestingly, we open with Mike, Kevin, and Bill giving us a little prologue to the weirdness we're about to get our into. Smash cut into a cabin where we find a perv and a captive woman who's understandably quite put out by the fact that she's being put up for ransom. One terrible edit later and we're joining the titular bad dude himself, Detective Al Connors, the guy from Harlem. The guy from Harlem who currently works and lives in Miami. Yeah, I don't get it either. He treats us to some Birdemic style opening credits as they roll on while he drives to get to his office. Having reached his clearly not a redecorated living room office, he gets some messages from his secretary Sue which prompt Al to give her and therefore us a little of his backstory. He then sits in his office for a full minute of screen time before an old friend of his, David McLeod of the CIA, shows up in his office and asks him for help. They have a woman in peril who needs Al's protection. She's the wife of a chief of state of an African nation. I'd be more specific, but the film isn't, so that's the best I can do. Anyhow, McLeod gives Al the details, and Al insists that if he protects her, it has to be at a hotel of his choosing. McLeod agrees for some reason, and the mission is underway. Just wanted to give you a little intro into what you can expect from this film, guys. Well, this is really our first black exploitation film, and uh, and among the whole library of black exploitation films, I'd say we picked this one because it is the doofiest black exploitation film ever made. Um, the most flub lines per capita of any movie any ever, ever, I think. For sure, yeah. yes. Yeah. Indeed. So uh, enjoy the guy from Harlem. The guy from Harlem. The guy from Harlem. From Harlem. What in the hell are you doing? Oh, don't get excited, girl. I'm not trying to cause any trouble with you. I'm not going to hurt you either. Just relax. I was just trying to put the spice back into our marriage. You sleep well? You mean I'm going to have company? She's one of your kind. Presbyterian? What the hell you mean my kind? Oh, don't get upset. I didn't mean anything by her. I mean, she's black. She's the wife of an African president. Just like you. Man, I don't give a damn what she... Get your damn hands off of me. You sorry, bitch. I'll see you later. How dare you spurn my courtly advances? Uh, I suspect we're about to be entreated to Boogie. Well, please don't. That cat's a bad dude. Check it out. Drives a Chrysler. Yeah, 72 LeBaron Coupe. Got rust protection. What you say? Yeah, radial tires and factory air. Ooh, guy from Harlem. Brother man. Getting his MBA at night. Wants to open a tropical fish store someday. Guy, guy from Harlem. Mmm. Guy from Harlem. He is being the hell out of from Harlem. David McLeod. I wonder if that's the same McLeod. Did he wear a cowboy hat and not play by the rules? No, couldn't be. He says he's an old friend of yours. I'll be damned. That must be him. You just said it couldn't be! The CIA. the CIA? Yeah, when I first started out in Harlem as a detective... Wait a minute, that's Will Ferrell. CIA man. A very convincing a makeup job. Rough spots. Have him come in as soon as he arrives. Sure. I'll be in the back of the rumpus room. I mean my office. You can assume he's dialing his agent, trying to get off this very film. <laughs> Hi, we're from And the Sunshine Band. Yes, can I help you? Yes, you may. I'm David McLeod. Is Eric on his end? Oh, yes. He's expecting you. You can go right in. Thank you. Non-stop waiting room action. You know, Al, you wanted the greatest guy. I think you're a hell of a guy. It's also official but CIA policy that you're a hell of a guy. <laughs> so what line of business brings you to Miami? Is this your card? Our client's life is in danger. And we're sure that foreign powers will be trying to prevent this meeting. We're thinking Liechtenstein. What Bastards. I can't understand, Dave, is why the CIA doesn't supply the security. Why do they want me? It's Machert, isn't it? Some this person from my African nation, she's the wife of a chief of state. Sorry, could you be more vague? And we're thinking that you'll check in at a hotel as... Man and wife. You didn't learn any of your lines, <laughs> did you? Hands off. We don't need an international crisis. You want to know if she's cute? 
It's a fair yeah. and perfectly professional but question that you didn't even ask. There's $2,000 in it for you. Plus a leisure suit allowance. Hey, that's great for 24-hour service. That's not bad. Let me consult with my eggs. If I'm taking this case, I have to pick the hotel. I'm a Motel have 6 man. Dropper. I guess we'll have to do it as you say. Look, if I'm going to worry about the security of Mrs. Ashanti, let me do it my way. Well, we're the, the CIA, the you're a guy sitting in a paneled room, room so yeah, let's do it your way. <laughs> Later on at the most garish hotel room possible, Al greets his client Mrs. Ashanti as if she was his own wife. But don't worry, it's not gross and salty because it's just for security purposes. After some awkward dialogue about her being in a lot of pain, they call for a masseuse to come up for her. When she gets there, she signals a couple guys out the window, letting us as an audience know, she's definitely in league with the bad guys. She then starts massaging Ashanti, and Al watches despite the fact that Ashanti asks him to leave the room. Only for security purposes, remember. After the massage, she puts on a barely there robe, and they sit quite cozily on the couch, and she gives some info without actually telling Al anything about herself, because the film just skips it. How did she get her accent? How did she become married to an African president? Who knows? The film itself stutters at one point, and another line is just written off by the script, so apparently her background is none of our business. Seems this cocaine stuff is really popular. Princess Madame. Allow me to taste your hair. So We're registered as Mr. and Mrs. Al Connors. Hey, wait a minute, you don't mean- Of course not, but it's just for security purposes. Now if you'd In please fact, strip down, just, just for security purposes. You can take that one. Did you say you were not feeling well? Here we go. Yes. I'm in pain all over. Oh yeah. You know, I had to stay on that plane for so long. You know, I really can use a good massage. <laughs> okay. I'll call from a suit. Wait, Look, what? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh, you idiot. You did that completely wrong. Get back in there. Haven't you ever Hi. seen one of these? Hello. Yes, I would appreciate it if you would send a masseuse to suite 304 for my wife. No, I already blew my chance. Minutes. That's fine. Guy from Harlem will return oh, and we're back. <laughs> Guy from Harlem. <laughs> Sauntering down the hallway, taking his own sweet time, huh? The room really captures the feel of a 70s funeral home. <laughs> yeah, double-double animal style, and fries. Hi, how are you? Hi. I brought you a painting of a horse I made. I'm t so ladies, where's your favorite place for a guy to be from? How do you feel? Al, what are you doing in here? Just admiring you. Actually, there was nothing on TV. Um, the room, please. Sorry, ladies, but I enjoy watching. It's been a long time, you know? All right, you peepin' Tom, you may remain. He used to be a professional massage watcher. You charge your bill to my room, right? Yes, the bill will be charged to your room. Your room is the location to which the charge will be billed. Can I have some privacy around here? Does my dress look frumpy? I had to. May I offer you a cheeks, seat, a seat? Cheeks. Let's just leave touchy, my husband touchy. out of it. Yes, leave a chief of I'm state sorry. of an African nation you? out of it. As a matter of fact, I was just getting ready to ask you the same thing. Why don't we go down and get a bite to no, eat? No, for security Bites purposes, to eat are too to dangerous. Oh, I... Uh, yeah, this is Suite 304. Yes, sir. We'd like to have two New York Strip steaks. Well done. Are you insane, sir? What kind uh, of idiot yeah, orders a New York have, Strip um, well done? Bring a bottle of scotch. Yes, sir. J&B. What? Sir, would you like a real scotch? J&B is literally the word. You realize my husband will imprison and torture you for this, right? Now, where does a foreigner pick an accent like that? Well, when I was very young in the... Yeah. And how'd you become the white yeah. <laughs> president? Oh, that surprised me. Well, I'm sure the explanation for such an outrageous development is... Wait, wait that's it? Yes. How the hell did you become the wife of an African president? Which is very surprising. Harlem is the experience playground for all people interested in becoming detectives. Oh, really? I remember hearing that sound in Harlem. That must be room service. <laughs>
The room service gets there, and Al knocks the lady delivering it clean out. But wait, it wasn't a woman, it was a man, and it wasn't steak he was delivering, but a gun. But nobody fools Al, and he instantly knew it was a trap. While Ashante goes to get dressed, two more goons enter the room, and Al has a tussle with them that looks like it was choreographed by a couple of seven-year-olds. The couple then check out of the hotel and find themselves at a blonde lady's apartment. Who is this lady? Why, she's Al's girlfriend! Yup, girlfriend to the guy who was just trying to get with a married woman who he's supposed to be keeping being safe, but just you wait, it gets worse. Al tells her that she needs to vacate the apartment so he and Ashante can use it to be safe. Apparently going to another hotel would be too risky. She questions what's going on, but does end up obliging Al without too much of a fuss. Also, she and Al both refer to Ashante as princess in this scene, since the movie can't be bothered with consistent character backstories. <laughs> Al, have you lost your mind as a woman? I know that. It's how we greet each other in Harlem. Man. Nobody fools a while, baby. He didn't have steaks on this tray. I can smell a New York strip steak a block away. <laughs> what are you, a cartoon yeah, dog? I'm sure he's got somebody. <gasps> Kirk, Gorn, Captain Punch. Playground smack, playground smack. Followed by aggravated grab-assing. Fight choreographed by a six-year-old messing around in his aunt's basement. I'm gonna kill you right now. All right, all right, all right, all right. And we're back. Work for Big Daddy. You tell Big Dad that nobody fools with a guy from Harlem. You dig? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you were thinking of not telling Big Daddy that, weren't you? Hey, it was just getting started. Oh, I thought you had forgotten me. Oh, you know I never forget you, baby. Your apartment is so hideous, it's seared into my memory. Who is she? Oh, I'm sorry. Let me introduce you to Mrs. Ashanti. Hi, Princess, baby. this is Joe. Oh, I, I stepped on your line. Should we... No, okay, just, just yeah. keep going? Keep going. Okay. Okay, Buster. You would better have a good explanation. Well, I'm from Harlem. Oh. But how long are you going to hide this girl in my place? Just for tonight. And I need to hide the Queen of Malaysia here next Tuesday. Looking out the window. Checking out the boat. We are in Miami. That much is for sure. Look at those boats. Look at those boats. Look at those boats. Look at those boats. Look at all those boats are going by. <laughs> well, it was a pleasure to meet you, Princess. But I gotta warn you about this Playboy detective. He's really incompetent. I, I had such a wreck. Now that they're alone, Ashante fixes some drinks while Al calls McCloud to fill him in on everything. Then he calls Sue to let her know she can leave the office, and she lets him know that the CIA called him earlier. Even though McCloud is with the CIA, so why did someone else from the CIA call him separately? You know what? Why am I wasting brain cells on making sense of this? Let's just keep going. Al starts to massage his client, as of course, Al used to be a masseuse himself. Yes, the Miami-based detective who's originally from Harlem used to massage people for a living. I guess that counts as enough foreplay as the two decide to start making out and head into the bedroom. Remember, the bedroom of Al's own girlfriend. After Ashanti gets dressed in an entire bedsheet, they start getting comfortable, which includes Al getting undressed and them sucking face. Who thought this was appealing cinema exactly? It's a very nice place. Really? Are you seeing the same you things I am? To drink. She's a princess. Yeah, that's a great idea. I better give David McCloud a call. He just telepathically signaled me, and you know how impatient David McCloud is. Oh yeah, using a phone with a rotary dial on the handset will never go out of style. <laughs> Guy from Harlem. You gonna pick her up? How about about 9.30? 9 o'clock? That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> he should have known. David McCloud is not yeah, a 9.30 kind problems. of guy. No, sir. Sweet 15 old... All right, I'll be right with you. I gotta make another call. Sure. I'm gonna call David McCloud back. See if I can move it to 9.15. <laughs> phone answering a primer. Okay, let's give this a whirl. Al Connor's office. Oh, I almost forgot. You had another call. A guy working for the CIA. <laughs> Try to hire address. secretaries who don't almost forget that the yes, CIA boss, called did you. Did I do the wrong thing? Your meeting with the Secretary of State is at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. 
They'll be picking you, uh, you up at around nine. I blew that. Should I? You should be a pretty no, safe answer. Going, of course. Got any suggestions? Well, you know, I used to be a masseur once myself. Paralyzed three people, then gave it up. Come on. No, seriously. Take me. Turn around here. Let me see what I can do for you. Oh. Oh, God, no. Oh, God. You have serious muscular abnormalities. I can't do anything for you. Hmm, no wonder you got rid of those bad guys. You're so strong. My husband will kill you, by yeah, the way. There's a slight problem that I forgot to mention to you. Oh? What kind of problem? This apartment only has one bedroom. Oh, that's no problem. We can share. Ah. Uh, beautiful. His secret police will but beat I you with steel rods for yet. days. You know, I've carried these damn bags of yours so much, I'm beginning to feel like a bellboy. <laughs> oh, when I'm about to lead someone on and then freeze them out, everything seems funny to me. <laughs> Wait, what now? Why don't you get out of the sinks? In the meantime, I'll warm the bed up with a couple of well-done steaks. <laughs> <Yeah. Duh! Holy laughs> what a change. Yeah, oh, we're gonna do the Marx Brothers mirror scene? <laughs> Yeah. I think she's becoming more clothed with every passing second. Uh, oh. <laughs> Please, guy from Harlem, whatever you're thinking, don't do it! Oh, boy. The next day, Elle's job is done as she's safely given back to the CIA and her husband, I guess, though we never see any of that at all, just as the best character of the film and his sons enter looking for Elle's help. This man is Harry DeBald, a millionaire who makes money off of drugs, property, and other nefarious businesses. You see, Harry's daughter Wanda has been kidnapped. She's the woman from the first two minutes of the film, if you recall. She's been abducted by the goons of Big Daddy, a local kingpin who nobody has ever seen. Despite being as hard to catch as smoke in your bare hands, Harry goes on to give Al every possible visual detail of Big Daddy's appearance you could want. In exchange for his services, Harry gives him a bag full of cocaine and an envelope with a quarter of a million dollars in it as collateral to make sure Al knows he's serious. Al accepts the mission and prepares to go find Big Daddy. I don't think I'm taking any more babysitting jobs. But just to be clear, I definitely had sex last night. Uh, I think in about 15 minutes I'm splitting for the rest of the day. I just popped in to let you know I got Alex, some, which I totally did. What's going on? Right, let's see. Today's agenda, get real office, stop working in the spare room of a weird church basement, What's with the little swords on the wall? And of course, find out what sex is. Good morning, good looking. Another foreign dignitary, I presume? Yeah, can I help you? I don't know, I think you can. I came here to see Al Connors. I'm hoping he can help me control the volume can of I my have your voice. Name and the nature of your business? <laughs> Sweetie, I got an answer for both of those questions. You got two questions, I got one answer. Yep, yeah, sure. Uh -huh. <laughs> None of your damn business. Al, I think that goof-off day of yours is about to be ruined. I know. You work ten feet away from me. I, I heard and saw literally everything. Three dudes. You think that dude will see us? Think it! He better see us. Hey, Mike, think I could have some of your water? Think it! Oh, of course, here you go. Hello, my man! Yeah. They called me and you probably heard of me. I'm Harry Duvall. They do call you, and I probably I heard of you that. It's my pleasure to meet you, Al. I heard a lot of good news about you. This is my son, Larry. There's absolutely yeah. no good news about Larry. I came here to see you today in your office on, for two reasons. Uh-oh. <laughs> two very important reasons to me and my happiness. One, it's kind of personal. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Lost his you, momentum the fast why that time. The is because them hoodlums and my boys have been fighting for a long, long time over valuable property that brings in millions of dollars each and every day. Millions every Sounds day? Like is this piece of property people. Canada? Not mine. Sorry, gentlemen. You've come to the wrong place. I don't deal with hoodlums. As Let's a private down. eye, most of my work is with political up. figures at the highest level. Sit down! Lay the good stuff on it. Splendor, baby. You got five hundred thousand dollars worth of stuff right there, and you got a quarter million dollars in cash right there. In this envelope? Now, is it all in ten thousand dollar bills? <laughs> but what I can't understand is why you want me to do the job. Why don't somebody in my organization do the job? It's not what he said. Do you realize, Al, that we're talking about life and death? 
Everybody's too upset. After all, man, are you talking about my daughter? My criminal organization is very sensitive. <laughs> very few people ever see Big Daddy. The only thing I can tell you now, he's about six feet, two inches tall, has blonde, curly hair, and man, you talking about some muscles. He got some muscle on him, and he always wears bands around his muscle. That's the only thing we can tell you about Big Daddy. Nobody ever sees him. Man, if only we had some details. I'm gonna have to pay this Big Daddy fellow a little visit. When you do, don't stare at his hook hand. He's self-conscious, but nobody well, ever I sees know. him. That's music in my ear. By the way, how do I get in touch with you? How do you get in touch with us? I got two telephones. Oh, no. I'm sure about that. Good looking, you've been, you took care of business. <sighs> Gotta start planning these sentences Harry, out you. all the way, man. Finally cutting back to Wanda after only seeing her one time 45 minutes ago, we see that she's being continually harassed by one of the captors and it's just as uncomfortable now as it was at the beginning of the film. Meanwhile, Al heads to a gym to speak to a guy in the sauna named Jim, who he thinks is one of Big Daddy's main henchmen, if you can call him that. Al agrees to meet him this afternoon with the ransom and heads to his car. He waits it out until Jim gets into his own car and tails him in one of the most mellow car chases ever put to film. And some more sexual assault vibes. What doesn't this movie have? What's the matter, little fox? Your dad's some kind of shouting lunatic in a blue so suit or something? What you think? Damn, it's almost one o'clock. I wonder where the hell Jim is. I don't know. Is Jim the cameraman? If so, he's way over here, guys. You give me a little action and I'll let you go. How's that sound? Hey, hunky. I'm no damn fool. This is the worst bed and breakfast I've ever know. been to. Wait till you on. see my Yelp review. Yeah, that damn big daddy would... With the right workout regimen, you too can become iron zeering. I'm looking for Jim. Jim, you'll find him uh, up in the sauna. Just cut up the stairs there and take a right. I know where all our members are at all times. Also, I think Jim had a blueberry muffin for breakfast. Not from his usual place, uh, a new place. But he likes it almost as much. Maybe more, he's not sure. He's, ga he's got to hit the post office later. Best in gun courtesy a children's cowboy costume from the drugstore. Put it away. I always bring my gun to the sauna. I sweat more knowing the ammo could overheat and explode at any moment. I can get the money and the merchandise. I just have to know where to deliver it. If being threatened in a sauna by a man with a gun is so commonplace that you have to bring your own gun, maybe get a lock for the door? Yeah, what did that guy say? Big Daddy is about six foot two, blonde curly hair. Man, you talk about some muscles. Ah, oh, hell, it's all so vague. I'll never find him. Nobody's ever seen him. Oh, yeah. Guy from Harlem's a walking to his car. Yeah, it's on the next block, baby, but it's still pretty good space. Get down. Oh, you know he didn't park in no loading zone, child. He's going to pull into traffic in a smooth, controlled manner. Oh, you know he is, girl. Poorly framed, through a doorway, 90% brown, a hideous guy we just met slowly putting on a leisure suit. Ugliest shot of all time. Ugliest shot of all time. Yep, unanimous. I'm glad we could share this moment. Mm -hmm. Yes, Black exploitation, a genre known for its big afros and lengthy, real-time, low-speed driving scenes. The guy from Harlem is his name. Following at a safe distance is his game. I can hear your theme music, Al. I know you're following me. Nah, I was just playing with you. <laughs> I bet. One of the weirdest oh, okay, rom-coms okay. I've just ever seen. See if you were a little... You know, I better check those ropes just to see you ain't got wings. I'd be able to enjoy this a lot more if I knew for certain she was aware a movie was being filmed. <laughs> Jim gets back to the cabin, not knowing else followed him, and meets up with some of his men who themselves want to take turns with the hostage. Jim actually gets there in the nick of time to keep Wanda from getting a word that's unsafe for YouTube's algorithms, and kicks the would-be attacker out of the cabin. And in a satisfyingly unsatisfying fight scene, Al knocks the creep out cold on his way to the rescue. But one poorly acted fight scene in a field wasn't enough for this movie, as Al then takes out the other two guards in separate struggles. You know, that bro is not too bad looking. I haven't had any of that dark meat in a long time. Think she deep fry us a turkey. I wonder if Mac will let us take turns, at least. You interested? Ah, sharing. The deep friendship of those two guys is the real moral heart of this movie. He's, uh, inside with the broad. She doesn't command African president's wife-level security, huh? Ah! Mac! 
Leave her alone. Damn it, Mac. That rug is an antique. I told you to keep your hands off that chick. Hey, what can I say, man? She looked horny. Never a good sentence to have to say to your boss. The ambient noise of the guy next door mowing his lawn really adds to the drama. The director was going to offer him five bucks to stop, but then he realized that was the afro sheen budget for the rest of the film. Want to know why I think the guy is going to win here? I'll give you two reasons. Two reasons. The first, well, it's just that, uh, the family. <laughs> there, there. The guy puts up almost as good a fight as the woman that was tied to a chair. Well, obviously, the next step is to drag him behind a bush and re-emerge wearing his clothes. And wait, is he actually going to do it? What time is it now? Well, there's no reason to be angry. Well, okay, maybe a few dozen gigantic reasons. Max's been taking a hell of a long time. Why don't you go see if you can find him? I have full faith in you, guy who looks like a janitor's apprentice. Okay, at this point, he may as well just uproot a shrub and sneak around behind it like Bugs Bunny. Ah, the guy's from Harlem! Ah! Damn it, Raul, did you forget you had a gun again? Beating this guy up just isn't the same if it isn't followed by an African queen changing into an incredibly modest nightgown. <laughs> well, yeah, you got it tie some branches together. Uh, you know, Mike, it's a from Harlem thing, okay? <laughs> the entire movie summed up in one gesture. Hold it right there, Connors. You should have never left Harlem, guy from Harlem. <laughs> he may as well point a pack of Rolos at him. And he's immediately signed by the Kansas City Royals. <laughs> Elle makes it to the shack and holds Jim at gunpoint and knocks him out to save Wanda. On the way back to the car, though, one of the guards wakes up and starts to shoot at them, even though Elle should have disarmed him as soon as he beat him down. Elle ends up besting him in gunplay as well, and he and Wanda get into the car relatively unscathed. Wanda pleads with Elle not to take her home because she doesn't want to see her dad. Elle decides to oblige her and get the full story. Understandable, but where on earth is he going to take her in the meantime? Why his blonde girlfriend's apartment, of course? Not a nice hotel, not even back to his place, his girlfriend's apartment. Why? I have no friggin' clue. All I know is the blonde lady has to break up with Al and fast. Don't do anything stupid. The guinea pig hide nailed to the wall really pulls the place together. Come on now, put that gun down. Are you crazy? Hey now, don't do anything stupid. Like starring the guy from Harlem. You don't know the shit I had to go through to get to see you. <sighs> she just used Norman's catchphrase. <laughs> Oh. I was protecting her. I came here. I'm protecting her. From the guys I hired who were trying to attack her. I want you to take a message to Big Daddy. Sure, sure. Anything, anything, anything. Tell him he's next. Okay, but which Big Daddy? There's like 10 in town. It's a fairly generic nickname. <laughs> Just a heads up. I'm going to be shooting at you. Why do you leave me with a gun? Did you kill him? I don't know. Get the hell out. I'll take you to small boob Jessica Simpson's place. She loves when I bring threatened women with afros there. <laughs> Wait, he's really taking her there? I was kidding. <laughs> Al, don't say a word. I know. Detectives sometimes get weird assignments, huh? Mom, please. Five minutes. I'm sorry about the hassle. Let's go to a hotel. No, it's much safer here. Why don't you sit down and relax? No matter what hotel you were thinking of, this apartment is safer. What I can't understand is how your father got into drugs if he was doing so well in gambling. Yeah, those two things are never safe. related. The next time, it'll there be won't be a you next and time. me. Goodbye. Nice knowing you. Whoever you are. Ooh, he's gonna wake up to her boiling his pet mad. rabbit someday. I tell you, you bone one African queen on her bed. Why don't you give your father and brother a ring before you take a shower and let them know you're okay because I'm sure they're worried about you. I mean, I don't want to talk to them now. Let them keep imagining my lifeless body in a ditch somewhere. Give me the... Harry. Yeah, it's me. She's fine. Uh, yeah, but I can't bring it to you right now. What? Give me two reasons! She, nothing's wrong, she's fine, but I just can't bring it to you right now. She doesn't want to see you. I would kill a man to hear Harry's end of this conversation. <laughs> Harry, it's a law. See you tomorrow morning. Right, babe. Love you. 
After getting dressed in another one of Elle's girlfriend's ridiculous nightgowns, Wanda opens up to Elle about her past. She told Harry if he got into the drug dealing business she'd leave home, and she meant it. Unfortunately, that led to her kidnapping and ransoming. Elle tells her she has to see her family tomorrow, even if she doesn't want to return home with them. And then comes the really unappealing scenes again as Alan wanted to dance and head into his girlfriend's bedroom to soil it as he did just the night before with the African princess slash queen slash president's wife. Meanwhile, Jim heads out to tell Big Daddy that Al has ruined everything for them. The next day, Harry comes to collect his daughter, but Al refuses to hand back the collateral drugs. I think it's because he's trying to tell Harry to get out of the drug game for his daughter's sake. It's kind of hard to tell between the bad script and a few of the riffs, honestly. Either way, Harry leaves with Wanda in tow, so things worked out for the best, I guess? Oh. Well, you know you are going to wear the bedspread. <laughs> Joanne never looked like that in that. Yeah, like a walking exterminator's tent. You know, I've been doing some things. I promised my father that the first dealing he had with drugs that I would leave home. And at 32 years and old, that's a tragedy. That two weeks ago, he bought in a big shipment, and that's when I decided to split. Naturally, I'm assuming that that's the opportunity that Big Daddy needed to kidnap you. <laughs> There's no naturally going on anywhere business. around here, sir. He I'm not sure I'm growing with him. Oh, the suspense is killing me. Sorry, I meant the stroke is killing me, guys. Said the word suspense instead because I'm having a stroke. How about a loop? Oh, baby, someday I'd like to set you up in a little apartment that I'd kick you out of. Somehow the least attractive possible angle of two people kissing. Brings to mind a mother wolf regurgitating bits of vole into her cub's mouth. So... Our five-hour game of Dungeons and Dragons begins. Wh what? Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> you have a yet another huge garment on underneath this. I'm tired already. Hmm. So, so other people emit that obnoxious static sound when they have sex, too? It's, it's not just me? I think it's just a damaged movie soundtrack. It's not them. Never mind. So you, you really do make that I sound? said drop it, Mike. He left me tied up and he killed off the guys I was with. This Alcon is probably going to try to split. If I know my gymnastic floor routines, and I do... I got a plan. I want you to meet Wanda Duvall. Wanda, this is Sue. Hi. How are you doing, Wanda? Thanks Listen, for bringing Wanda's the room to maximum Harry afro Duvall, capacity. Will be here at any... Come on. Let's get you into a grandmotherly Victorian nightgown. You know, you're really very pretty this morning. Last night? Wow, what the hell was that? Really turn me... Say the word, and it'll be me. And that word is J and B on the rocks. Daddy, you just made my ears bleed. Al, you did a great job. You did a great job. Listen, I'm sorry to interrupt this little family reunion. Uh huh. But man, you brought such happiness to the family. I was overjoyed seeing you stick your tongue down my daughter's throat. Just so happy. But without. You mean to tell me you don't give up all that shit, huh? My man, you got to be losing your goddamn mind. My beloved daughter, I'm so grateful well, for your return. No, no objection. Here's what you do. You get a check in the mail. Airmail special delivery first thing in the morning. That's not necessary. Sending Just things airmail is dumb when you're in the same town. You better look out because Big Daddy gonna be dead on your case for your black ass. All I can say is, I know. You love my vest. Thank I know. You, Everyone night. does. Come on, Wanda. Let's go home. Bye-bye. All right, now. I feel better. Why? I got two reasons! Big Daddy calls out directly and has a proposition for him. He heads straight out, telling Sue not to worry, but Wanda coincidentally calls that moment, and Sue gives her the details of Al's rendezvous. Big Daddy asks Al to join his criminal organization, which of course he refuses. What Big Daddy and Al don't know is that Harry's sons have taken care of Jim, who Big Daddy had posted to take Al out if he declined his generous offer. The sons and Wanda approach them, and Big Daddy says Al doesn't have the guts to fight a man to man. Al agrees for no reason, as in reality, not only do they have the upper hand on Big Daddy now, but a guy as skinny as him wouldn't stand a chance against a guy as muscular as Big Daddy. But this is black exploitation film land, where muscles and weight don't contribute to your odds of winning a fight, apparently. And Al, as expected, reigns victorious. Does he kill Big Daddy or merely subdue him for the time being? It's unclear. But he won the fight, so the movie's over, with him and Wanda heading out to spend some more YouTube unsafe quality time together. The end. Uh, you're blocking the shot. <laughs> Just kidding, there's no cameraman. This is security footage. Perhaps I should talk to him now. Why should I run? Let me speak to him. Hello, large father. Connor speaking. Yeah, I want to talk to you too, man. 
Be at the 79th Street Marina in one hour. Wear a huge okay. nightgown. This is between me and you, so come alone. <laughs> I will totally not be there. Oh, Wanda, I'm so glad you called. You left nearly a minute ago, and I was worried. That secret sniper should really turn down his boomer. That cat's a bad dude. That's what I said when Garfield ate the pie I left cooling on the windowsill. I'm glad you showed you, black bastard. That's what I told the guy in the Mickey Mouse costume I hired for my kid's birthday you know you party. Got a big mouth. Eat it, Alex Karras. Ease it does, big boy. You move, you're dead. Mayflower Moving I'll Company's very ill advised slogan for a this. while. You know, Connors, I could use a man like you in my operation. I need a shirt buttoner. What's your price? We all have a price. Mine, for example, is $17.99. Big Daddy, you can't afford me. <laughs> well played, my mom jeans wearing friend. People don't turn down my offers. And live. And by live, I mean not make me cry. Keep it Tom in the bushes over there. I suspected he had friends with him. That's why I did nothing about it. Find out I was here. God, the vest is coming off. This is serious. Big Danny. I want your guarantee, Connors. When I kick your ass, I'm gonna get out of here alive. He's got my word. Once he kicks my ass, let him live, guys. Kick his damn teeth up! Aw, oh, they're hugging it out. Ah, the old grab his face, trip him, then do a fancy dream ballet pose move. Show him who's big man! Poor cinematographer, what did he do? Ah, not shot, just suffered a rupture from his super tight slacks. Oh, it's pine needles. No shirt was a bad decision. You all right, man? You know, are you okay? Yeah, man. <laughs> Instantly okay, in fact. Ella, you all right? Yeah. Still very yeah, fine, sexy, baby. baby. I got just a couple of more loose ends I got to wrap up on this case. And what mu what would that be? No, it's good enough. Print it. Let's wrap this thing. <laughs> that was also the director's reaction when the cast asked how much they were going to get paid. Man, are you thinking what I'm thinking? I guess you better be buying a new suit, brother. Red on. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Their sister's off to boink some guy so they need to buy new clothes? Too because... weird to speculate. Plus, the movie's over. Wait, what? This is one of the best of the best of the best that Rift Tracks has for us. The script is ridiculous. The actors barely even know what's in said script. The cinematography is bizarre. The fight scenes are some of the lamest out there. The music choices are laughable. And that's not even all the amazingly terrible points the film showcases. And of course, we're given some incredibly hilarious jokes throughout. This is one of my top three full-length Rift Tracks of all time, and I could not recommend it anymore to you. If you haven't seen it, go get it. And if you have seen it, watch it again. Its comedy is so fantastic, it's got to be seen and enjoyed by as many people as often as possible. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and thanks to all my groovy Patreon supporters, including Jackie Ball and Kevin Nata. And also, happy anniversary to me! This channel just turned four on the 16th of April. This has been such an amazing place for me to share my love of MST3K, Rift Tracks, The Muppets, Disney, and so much more, and I've met so many of you awesome people online with the same interests. Here's to the next four years. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys later. Temple.